basic intrinsic part of science. Please use this information for your notes. What is science? When you see something happen, you'll often ask, why did that happen? Or, if you want to make something happen, you'll often ask, how do you do that? Science is a tool for answering those questions of why and how, using a very predictable scientific method. Now you've seen the scientific method before. If you find that I'm going too fast, please feel free to pause. First, we observe some sort of an event. Next, we develop a model, a hypothesis, which makes a prediction as to how or why that event occurred. We test that prediction with an experiment. So our hypothesis has to be testable, and then we run an experiment. This is the base of all science. We have to have data in order to draw any conclusions. In our experiment, we record data and analyze the data to get results. Finally, we make a conclusion based on those results. We revise and test data, meaning that we can redo the experiment to make sure we didn't screw up somehow. And we will also try and see if uh, we can answer any questions that are, put, that are posed by the experiment. We share those conclusions we developed and experiment with other scientists um, so that they can test it as well. And finally, our successful hypothesis may become a scientific theory. All right, let's give an example of an experiment. Does miracle Grow really get you bigger tomatoes? That would be the question we start with. If tomato plants are treated with the recommended dosage of miracle Grow, their average mass per tomato will be greater than the average mass from untreated tomato plants. This is our prediction, or hypothesis. When we run our experiment, which is the next step, we have the same type of tomato plants, the same soil, the same original height and age, the same pot, the same sunlight, same location. Notice I'm using same a lot. That's very important. These items that we keep the same are called constants. In the experiment, we have one group of 10 plants that gets the recommended dosage of miracle growth. Another group of 10 plants gets no miracle growth. The dosage of miracle growth is what we call the independent variable, or IV. This is what we are changing. It's the variable we intend to include as part of our experiment. And it's hopefully the only thing that we change. The group with no miracle growth is called the control group. It's what the comparison group. Um, to make sure that there's not something else that is playing with our plants uh, beyond the independent variable. During the experiment, we monitor for the growth of tomatoes. Each time a tomato becomes fully ripe, we can pick it, measure the mass with an electronic balance. We record the number and weight of each tomato from each plant, and at the end of the summer, determine which the, um, turn the average mass of the tomato from each group. Compare to see which group, the miracle grow or non miracle grow, have the greatest average mass per tomato. This greatest average mass per tomato is the dependent variable. It depends. I often think of the IV as the cause and the UV as the effect, the result. Some terminology. Skepticism is important to science, it's a questioning attitude. We don't automatically accept what anybody says is true without evidence. The independent variable is what the scientist is testing in the experiment, like the added plant food in the example or the amount of water given to a plant. You can only have one independent variable. A way to remember that the independent variable is, is what you're testing. I think of it as what I change, I for independent. The dependent variable is the result of the independent variable. It depends on the IV. Constants are anything that you keep the same or constant in your testing. You want lots of constants. You only want one variable, that's the independent variable. Everything else should stay the same, otherwise you're not being fair to the experiment and you are uh, leaving yourself open for multiple interpretations. In other words, you're not really testing what you think you're testing. The control group is the group without the independent variable, like the group with no plant food. This 
allows you to make sure that no outside variables are messing with your experiment. For instance, if perhaps the greenhouse where you're keeping the tomatoes was at the wrong temperature and kills all the plants. If you only had plants with miracle growth, you might think that maybe um, miracle growth was killing your plants. When in fact, it wasn't the miracle growth killing your plants. It was the wrong temperature in the group or some other factor. So you have a control group to compare against to make sure no outside factors are messing with your experiment. Here's an example of why controls are important. Growth hormone is secreted in response to a number of agents, including amino acid arginine. So a bunch of scientists were trying to test to see if amino acid arginine really does uh, cause people to secrete growth hormone. As a control, they, uh, well, the independent variable was the arginine. So they injected some volunteers with arginine. And as a control, they injected volunteers with saline. But they were very surprised to discover that both the ones who received arginine and the ones who received saline got growth, growth hormone secreted. Hey, well, does that mean that salt makes you grow faster? Probably not. So they then just waved a syringe and needle in front of their volunteers and found that that pr provoked the growth hormone secretion too. They discovered that any sort of stress also causes someone to produce human growth hormone. So that uh, was a very important realization that they came to, and they wouldn't have done so if they hadn't run the experiment with the proper control. Experiments should always match to the hypothesis. If your hypothesis is talking about miracle growth, you don't use any other fertilizers. But if your hypothesis is about fertilizer in general, you should probably use a number of different fertilizers. But that wouldn't be a great experiment because there's too many variables. So you need to make your hypothesis precise and make sure that the perfect experiment matches it. Your experiment must be repeatable, have lots of constants, have a control group for comparison if possible, have multiple trials so you know that the, uh, there wasn't just something funky about that one plant in the miracle growth example, and uh, you include accurate and precise measurements. When you're making conclusions, you cannot prove a hypothesis. You can gather evidence to support or reject it, but even if your experiment supports your hypothesis, you could have messed up somewhere. You could be misinterpreting results, or there could be something playing with your results that you weren't aware of. So you cannot prove it. Over time, though, you can get enough evidence to come up with a theory. Your experiment is a success whether you can make it, whenever you can make a conclusion. It doesn't matter if you reject your hypothesis, you still learn something. Your prediction may be wrong, but that doesn't mean that your experiment fails. Anyway. Now, to you, the word theory probably means guess, and that's the normal English definition in Webster's Dictionary. However, to a scientist, a theory is quite different. It's a model which is borne out by repeated tests. It's the current best explanation for the facts. So it's not the same. The scientific theory is our best understanding. Theories and laws often confuse people as well. Theories, though, explain why, and laws describe how. So they aren't exactly the same thing. A theory is no less than a law. Theories are a way to understand a phenomenon well enough to develop laws about it. Some definitions. Fact is a definite event observed with the senses. It can be with your natural five senses or using some sort of an instrument. Your hypothesis is an educated guess. A theory is our current best explanation of why something has happened. It's a hypothesis that has grown up. It's gotten plenty of uh, evidence to back it up, which is why it's now called a theory. Scientific law describes how something happens. Um, and it's often mathematical. For instance, Newton's law of gravity allows us to predict the behavior of the dropped object but it doesn't explain why gravity works. To wrap things up, scientific method is based on repeatable experimentation. An IV is your independent variable, your DV is your dependent variable. 
We have lots of constants. Facts are individual events that cannot be argued. For instance, this screen is uh, the, the image of the Earth on the screen is blue, green, and white. Theory is a hypothesis that is grown up, theory that has a great deal of supporting evidence to, um, to support it. And a law is a mathematical explanation of how something happens. 